All right, tonight we have with us Bob McCann. Some of you have met Bob before. Some of you have seen and heard him before. Bob's a native of Chicago, but he's been down here long enough that I don't hold that against him. He's an Irish Roman Catholic, which is a special kind. Oh, the worst. The worst. He's, he's the second of four sons, so he's, he's, you know, he's had sibling rivalry. His, uh, he attended Annunciata Catholic Grammar School, graduated from George Washington High School in the Chicago Public System. 1975, Dr. McCann joined the United States Navy. I was noticing anchors away. And then I felt you wouldn't appreciate it. Anyway, uh, he also received an honorable discharge from the Navy in 79, attended college on an Illinois Veterans Scholarship and the GI Bill. Dr. McCann is married to Rosemary McCann. He's lived in Manatee County, District 5, for 18 years. He's a devoted public servant, a physician, a lawyer, a business executive, an educator, and a proud U.S. Navy veteran. Please give him a warm Manatee Thank you, Bill. If you've got a choice, if you're a walker, you can use the mic. If you're not a walker, you can use the mic. You'll find that humility is my best suit. <laughs> How many people had trouble with traffic coming here today? <laughs> I figured I'd ask that first. So, being from the north, we came down here and we brought some good stuff with us. You know, we brought rush hour, road rage, pothole, and lots and lots of traffic. In the traffic today, you know, I, I started out on Saturday so I could hear it on time. <laughs> the thing is that. You know, we're going to invent something down here to try to get rid of that traffic. We're going to invent the thing where we put a little stick outside the steering wheel. You press it down, and it blinks on the left side. You press it up, it blinks on the right side. And then we're going to know what you're doing. <laughs> what we have now is, is not enough infrastructure for what we have built. We're overbuilding. We have urban sprawl. The roads themselves... We now put roundabouts in. And I did get here in the roundabout way today. There were two on the way here. <laughs> okay. The reason for those roundabouts are they're circular. That way you won't see the line. And we can keep building past it. <laughs> so, gotta excuse my jokes, I'm kind of a jokester. <laughs> what is a patriot? Us. No, it's a guy in the NFC that plays in the AFC East. <laughs> Actually, it's a guided missile. And it's an interceptor. And it hits another missile so that it won't hurt the people. That's the kind of patriot I'm going to need when they start swinging out those mailers with all those attack ads on them. And everybody that's running for office against the commissioner here is going to get those attack ads. So what I want to do right now is I want to challenge each of the commissioners. No attack ads for anybody. You know, they should be able to tell their consultant that they can say anything they want, but they shouldn't put it in writing in an attack ad coming because that's not what they said. And since they all have the same consultant, it shouldn't be hard to convey that message to them. Government is your friend. The thing you have to understand is you have inalienable rights. Those are given to you from God, yeah. not the government. Amen. When the government says they're your friend, they're not your friend. So what we need to do is we need to vote. And when we vote, the government can be your friend if you vote for public service, not for people that think they run you or need a job. Who's the smartest person in the room at a county commission meeting? I'll ask the gentleman today that was talking about the veterans. The smartest person in the room is the commissioner that comes in without his phone doesn't look for a test, doesn't look at the time, lets the people talk, understands what they're saying, has a logical discourse, and looks for solutions, not for problems. Right. Right. I'm a proud Navy veteran. Yes, I have my dad with me. <laughs> I was a Navy corpsman from 1975 to 1979. It's okay to think of that. Thank you for your freedom because he served. But what we have to do in this county is not have any homeless veterans whatsoever. 
We had this Monster to Power project, which should have been a no-brainer, but it took forever to get it done. And that's just something we can't do. What I'm here about is, I think we need to have individual rights. We need to stop the urban sprawl. We need quiet enjoyment of our homes here. We're already homeowners. We're already residents. There is no law whatsoever that says everybody coming down here is entitled to a house. <laughs> <laughs> we need to protect our natural resources, including wetlands, agriculture, wildlife habitat, Florida's natural beauty and heritage. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone needs boundaries. Now, I'm running for District 5, and only people from District 5 can vote for me. But my vote will affect every one of you. As Republicans, we want less government interference. We want local people to make decisions. I'm going to come out and say it. They need to leave the islands alone. I met with the mayor and the chief of police. They have plenty of parking on Holmes Beach. The idea that they want to build a parking lot there is just build, build, build. When they do build that parking lot, they want to go higher than three floors. They have an ordinance out there that says three floors is the highest you're supposed to go. Holmes Beach and Anne Marie Island are one of the 15 best places in the world to go. Why do we want to change that? The other thing about the smartest person in the room, besides not having a cell phone, they listen to advisory boards. But lately, you know, they're wondering, what's the value of advisory boards? Because they don't, the commissioners don't believe they need them because they already know everything. They forget to listen to the citizens' concerns. One of the things that happens in elections is they talk about the money and how financially, how much financial muscle you have. Well, what I want to show them in this election is that our votes are more important than their contributions. The other thing, I have a sign. I would show it to you, but obviously we're on video. <laughs> it says, not for sale, don't ask. My political consultants are right here. What we need to do is we need to let people come and talk to us, no matter what district you're from. Tell us what's going on. Discuss the things on the agenda. And when you come to the county commission to talk, you need to be heard. You need people to pay attention. You need people to listen to you. We talk about affordable housing. Shouldn't all housing be affordable? No. Why are they talking about building affordable housing here? Is, it, is the housing they're building not affordable? <laughs> One of the things that's happened, and I've talked to many people in the Small businesses are going out of business because they can't afford the homeowners association fees, they can't afford the rent, and not only that, they're building right next door to them. We need to bring businesses in to this county. There is something else that's very important here. All the wetlands are just about gone. They took away the protections, and what they did when they did that is they moved people, you know, to certain divisions that they want to build. There's one right now called Aqua on the Bay. Okay? After they got rid of the wetlands protections, that builder went to the state and said, can we move it just a little bit more? <laughs> so what we're going to have to do is call that Aqua in the Bay. <laughs> <laughs> what we need is a reformed and responsive commission. And the only way we're going to do that is to vote and vote the people out. I have two opponents in this uh, election coming up. I don't know if they'll both stay around. Uh, Kevin Wright named one of them. I am not going to name any names because my disclaimer is I want to protect the guilty or innocent. You choose. But the two people running in my district, there's a, a primary opponent and a secondary opponent. Okay, the primary opponent is all for building. He comes from the building commission, and they all talk about smart building, smart growth. I don't know what that is. So I looked it up today. 
It's a compact building design, opt for efficient land use and minimal sprawl. It's a preserved, open space, farmland, natural beauty, and critical environment area, protect green spaces. Strengthen and develop direct development towards existing community. Revitalize urban areas. Community and stakeholder collaboration and development decisions involve residents in shaping their neighborhood. Does that sound like what we're doing? <laughs> so that's the smart growth. On February 8th, they put two more people on the Manatee Planning Commission. Manatee Planning Commission is the practice squad for the Manatee Commission. You start out there, that's where the builders put you so you can get some experience. <coughs> on that commission, the article here doesn't make decisions, but it's the first board to review land use, many of which are located in East County. So the commissioners were picked for East County. That's my district. That's the one I'm running for. The two commissioners that are on there, one of them said, smart growth. East County residents fill a majority of the seats on the board. You know there's no representation on that board for District 1, Mayaka City, and none from the island. Now, how does that board represent Manatee County? But again, they're going to move up to the next and it says right here, there are no representatives from the island or, Man or Mayaka on the board. The seats are divided up by district, and the only requirement is to be a registered voting, voter living in Manatee County. You don't need any, any type of experience to be on that board, but they look for planning, engineering, environmental science, and development industry. Well, there is nobody from environmental science. What I'm looking at is we need to reform the commission. We need to go back to Republican values. We need to have individual rights. Okay? We need to have quiet enjoyment of our homes. We need less government interference, not more. We need citizens making decisions, not politicians. Because what's happening now is the people that are in the, in the commission all have the same treasurer, they all have the same consultant, they all get the same marching orders, and they vote in blocks. some intelligence <laughs> now they talk about and I'm going to hate here a little bit they talk about my primary opponent says this is a very they're going to build housing on Lena Road before they do that though they have to do a sound study because it's built right on 75 the other side is Atlanta wow how I met your mother. There was a place called Dawa Strepi. Okay, it was in the seventh episode of the third season. Lily and Marshall wanted to get away from Ted, who was bothering them too much, so they went to this area called Dawa Strepi. They asked the person there that was driving a taxi, what is this bad smell? And he said, you're Dawa Strepi. And he said, well, what does that mean? Downwind and sewage treatment. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to notice how affordable housing that my primary opponent is proud of on a landfill. Okay? What are we going to call that? A legal luxury landfill? <laughs> to me, that's not affordable housing. What we need is lower taxes, lower fees. We have CBDs in this area. CBDs were made to pass the cost of building a community from the builder onto the people that live in the community, the homeowner. That's not fair. Okay? Once the bond is paid, those things should sunset. They don't. They live in perpetuity. Now, my second opponent is on the board for the CBD at Terra. The CBD is there, according to him, and what he said for the infrastructure, and to make sure that the roads are good, and to make sure that all the functional activities and all of the building is done properly. They have a homeowners association there too that does exactly the same thing. You know, in Florida, we have a lot of fees. That's so when, who, who 
we should vote for? Counties. We have a, a website at Let Bob. There's a prescription on there for Manatee County. I'm a doctor. I can write a prescription. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and open up the questions and answer. Yes. We don't, we don't know where the mic is. This one works, so here. No, that's right, Bob. You're here. I have to live in your district, East County, Lake Ranch. Um, what, is, what would be your plan uh, to stop or to control uh, development east of the F future development area boundary, where the commissioners have already approved 12,000 houses east of the boundary line, and where FDOT has said that we can't handle the infrastructure, and where Swift Mud, which is Southwest Florida Water Management District, has said that, that there's not enough water if they build that the solution to Manatee County so we know how big the pipe that Swift must have done up water. So how would you address all the development east of the FDAP? We're supposed to have a comprehensive plan. That comprehensive plan has been so many, amended so many times, there is no plan. What we need to do is we need to sit down and we need to look at the comprehensive plan again, which is in process for rewrite. We need to look at the feasibility of putting something out there. FDOT says you can't do it. The one thing my opponent did say before that I heard was that he didn't feel the builders were connecting to the roads properly. He didn't feel the sewage was connected properly. He didn't feel that the water pipes were connected properly. So the county was going to take that over so that it would be better for future gener generations. What he didn't say is who was going to pay for it. What we need to do is when we draw a line, because that line says you can't build past that, we should not build past that. So I think what we need to do is we really need to look at the whole plan again and say either you have a plan or you don't. When I was a kid, we had a thing called a coloring book. The reason you had a coloring book was to learn how to stay within the lines. So I guess what we need to do, you know, the thing that happened was if you know. colored outside the lines, then your mother came over and showed you how to make that bigger a little bit so that it would look like it was part of the picture. That's the reason for the roundabouts on the streets. If we keep you looking at a circle, you'll never look at a line. Yes? I got a mic. There you go. Dr. McCann, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you at Mean Dean's, but it's for the sake of the people here who did not hear your answer that night. So this, we, we they should have been there. They were yeah, heard. that's right. Same question. I'm going to ask it, but it's for the audience that's here. So uh, if you are elected to the Board of County Commissioners, you will presumably be the only sitting physician on that board. And how would you go about guiding the other commissioners should another pandemic come to our area? Again, what I said first was individual rights. People have a right to make their own decision on what's going on. There should be no government mandates. There should be no government interference in telling you how to live. So you will make your own individual decision as to what that is. You know, back when I, I was a dinosaur, okay, I was I worked fee for service. I've been a doctor for 36 years. Okay, when they great brought in managed care, it went from paternal doctor patient relationship where the doctor would say you do this and you just did it, you know. It was kinda like, you know, take this and, and skip an hour, you know, and then they get the jump rope out, skip an hour. But the thing is that now it's consumer driven. You had a choice. We didn't even have DNRs back then. You know, we saved everybody we possibly could, whether it was futile or not. Now you have a choice. No one has the right to take that choice away from you. So you make your decision as to what's good for you during the pandemic. So mass mandates? Yeah. How would you handle the mask mandate? No mandates. <laughs> okay. 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 Come on, I got a mic. There you go, sir. Okay. So you're uh, 
predecessor, the previous um, commissioner of the district, uh, said that impact fees were a way to uh, spread the cost to all the existing citizens of the county. Um, what is your position on the impact fees? No, we're going to impact fees 100%. Anytime you're going to build something, you should have the money in order to do that ahead of time. But, you know, again, I went to the Dakin Dairy. I was out there. Okay? And I did learn something there. You don't put the cart before the horse. So, when we hear all of this about the infrastructure, why not put the infrastructure in before you build a community? That would make sense. Impact fees, unfortunately, they had a study done in 2014. What they did was they decided that they were going to collect 100% of the impact fees because they were only collecting 90%. And my primary opponent said, let's not kick the can down the road. Let's vote now and make it 100%. But they did that at a 2014 rate, which means that you're only paying 40% of what today's costs are. They didn't take inflation or anything else into consideration when they did that. They had another assessment done, they ignored it. Okay, what needs to be done is a current assessment and they need to pay 100% of the impact fees during an assessment and stop passing everything on to the taxpayer or the homeowner. Doctor, I appreciate what you said, but I want to add a couple comments because the virus that's coming was initiated in Geneva, Switzerland as the catastrophic contagion six months ago. Two weeks ago, it changed its name to Virus X. So that will be one of the topics that I am, as the moderator, am going to ask uh, Twyla, who, uh, as you know, knows a lot of doctors very well and sat on Trump's board, and Dr. Rosenwasser, that will be one of the questions. The next question is, what if you've had the vaccine? Is there a treatment of that? And the answer is yes. Number one, your diet. Number two, they have various protocols. And we, the people, uh, doctors down in Venice, they are all non-vaccinated like I am and all my family, except for one who went to, <laughs> yeah. well, so the truth hurts. It hurts because I'm a physician. I've got a son that's a physician. I have a question for him, Oh, I do. Well, the question was, I just wanted to make a comment on your answer. I thought it was very good, but we're going to have more discussion on that at the uh, thing on next Tuesday, Monday night at my church down in Sarasota. So continue on. then um, the issue really is, we've heard a lot of talk, and we have a lot of frustration amongst the public, amongst the voters, about um, what you call transparency and uh, the notion of various platforms that are issued behind closed doors, but which we know very little about. We have this problem of, of language. Um, the wordsmiths on the left have for decades perfected the science of saying what they want to say in misdirected language so as to make it appear one way and function another. Is there a process by which the board can simply come out with a monthly statement as to these are the functions that we are discussing, these are the things that we voted on for various reasons, and get the board to disclose, much like the Supreme Court would give independent opinions. We'd like to hear more about what the nitty gritty is and be able to vote on some of those things to put them on platform positions that at any given time we establish election date and go after this topic that you would be directed to perform. Yes, no? Actually, what you're saying is the sunshine law. Everything is supposed to be discussed in the sunshine so everybody knows what's going on. And the thing is that there shouldn't be any behind closed doors. There shouldn't be any, any deals cut in the back room. Now, we know that all happens. But the thing is that you know the sunshine law says that you're not supposed to be doing that. What we need to do is we need to work with the commission and get people on there that are public servants instead of politicians. That's not satisfactory because it's easy to say that's what we want to do, but we need to have some people that's got a fire under their ass that says, let's get to know exactly what's happening on these specific sites of geography and make it a referendum for the public and put it before the commission to say, yes, forget the sunshine, law. that's just a convenience factor. If you want to be a revolutionary, if you want to have revolutionary results, 
you got to stand up. You got to have skin in the game. So, can you be an advocate of that? I don't want you ending up if you get elected to be a chink off the block. You know, I, I'd like you to have. I know somewhere. exactly what you're saying. That's not going to be a problem. I am very vocal. And the thing is, you know, sometimes I mispronounce words. You know, such as when I first came here, there was a ranch over by my house. It was called Schrader Manatee. Okay, <laughs> it was run by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay, who now has changed the name of it to Shredder Manatee. Yeah. So the thing is that when you take a look at everything that's really going on here, and you're looking at all the lands, you know, I, I have a lot more I could say about, you know, one, we need to talk to the people in District 1, and we need to preserve the wetlands. We need to preserve that cattle ranch. We need to preserve, you know, those dairies. It's very hard for them to work right now, as we learn, because they work very long hours for very low pay. If there was something we could do to increase that pay, that would be great, but I don't know that that can be done just at the county level. I would like to see those those wetlands stay because obviously, you know, anybody who took a drink of water today should thank the farmer. Okay? Anybody that ate any meat today should thank a cattle ranch. Anybody that had any cheese should thank a dairy farmer. The thing is that those farms are very expensive to run as we learned out at the Dakin Dairy. And a lot of people don't want to do the work now. And, and take over the farm. And that's a shame because this was a very big agricultural area. We were known for, you know, cattle ranches and dairies and citrus farms. And, you know, I mean, take a look at the Nixon farm here. You know, this is something that has been here for 85 years. And yet, the county didn't value it enough to buy it. So I think there's a lot of things out there that we really need to take a look at. And, you know, can I promise you that I'm going to vote according to what the constituents say? The answer is yes. Can I promise you that I'm going to jump up and, and you know, howl at the moon? The answer is no. But what I will do is I will keep you fully informed, and it's your job to keep me fully informed. One of the things I want to tell you about Patriots. Yeah, I made the joke about the NFL. I did that because we have a gentleman that's here with a Kansas City hat on. Okay? <laughs> I made a joke about the intercept, but it's not really a joke. What you need to do is take those attack ads and ignore them, throw them away, forget they even exist. But what a real patriot is, is exactly what's here. People that come out and vote. People that understand the Constitution. People that come in and say, I want to help my community. And that's exactly the type of patriot that we have to have. Yes, the patriots protect us. They stand up and they talk up, just like he did at the commission today. The difference is going to be when you elect the commission, and I can't do it alone. I will tell you that we need to throw all the bums out, okay? Because we need to have a majority of that commission so that we could really make a difference. Next question, Black. I'm from District Five, also, um, and I heard recently from a realtor uh, that says that there are a lot of there is a group of Russian investors that are buying up. Uh, dairy farms and other kinds of farms here. So that is a concern. But I also wanted to tell you, I spoke about it last meeting, we were successful uh, at keeping the, um, going from R1 to R3. They put that for 18th Avenue East. There's like 80 acres and they wanted to put lots and lots of houses there would be if you figure three cars per house 750 more cars so we were lucky we pulled together and went to the county commission and we won so we want to encourage everybody that's in a similar situation to look at what we accomplished and work at it somebody else that i know said oh well, you'll you'll never succeed but we did so we have to stick together and we have to do that. And I do have a friend that's running for Mayaka District 1, and she would be very good. And it's Carol Bilberry. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. I owe my, do you have a question? Do you have a comment? I do want to say with the Reform Commission, what we need to do is we need to have more local significance. We need to be able to keep government as local as possible and the decisions as local as possible. But the biggest thing we need to do is we need to have everyday, ordinary people making the decisions, not the commissioners. Wetlands. What are wetlands? Take a look at Robinson Preserve. 
That's the test bed lands that we have. It's all natural. The kingbirds still fly there, baby blues still fly there. And then we have all the way over on the other side of Thomas Hole Bay and on the Sarasota Bay. Anyway, they started taking down the wetlands several years ago. They put that valuable infrastructure in before they start putting the houses up. Now the place is, bub is bubbling with activity. There's all houses. It's California-style housing, too, because there's about 10 feet between each building. Not, like, not exactly low, low density at all. The uh, question. 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 Go ahead. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the question. Yeah, okay. So, how do we know when they're going to start building or to get into the permit process to be able to build such a big, terrible, costly development? Well, what has to happen is there's an agenda. And normally, and this, this is something that I do want to tell you. You know, the Manatee County Planning Commission said no to the wetlands. Do not, do not move them. They were there for over 30 years in a county commission overruled. One of the builders actually sued the county commission twice and lost and decided after that it would be just better to buy the commission than it would be to try to sue it again. Bob, can I ask another one? Bob, you talked about um, ignoring the fancy glossy attack ads. You talked about consultants and the rest of it. Will you, um, are you going to accept any PAC money or consultant money or developer money to help run a campaign that is, is pretty expensive to do? Absolutely not. I can self fund the campaign if I need to do that. That's not a problem. But as far as PAC money goes, I do not do any quid pro quo work. I don't let anyone else think for me. I don't let anyone else tell me exactly how things are supposed to be. The people are the ones that are the power in the government, not the, not, not the special interest, not the money. That's not what it's all about. This is a Tea Party group. There was a former Tea Party member. I want to read something to you real quick. Uh, the amount of money raised was not supposed to be the huge determining factor. Our election process has been corrupted from the presidential level all the way to the local candidates. Why do you need that much money? And why do you need people to collect all that money from the rich, the powerful, the connected, the influential? It should come strictly from the people. I'll accept donations from an individual, but I really frown upon having businesses donate all the money expecting something in return, which is what they do. If people do not pay attention to politics, which is the way we govern ourselves, the powerful will take over and individual liberties will be lost. The Founding Fathers envisioned citizens becoming legislators, not career politicians. I believe the Republican Party has drifted from traditional Republican values. Fiscal restraint and responsibility, limited government, personal responsibility, ensuring individual liberty. It's too much about the money and the power and privilege, and less about individual freedom. A true enterprise system, not favoring companies through legislation, is what we need to restore and stop cronyism and corporate welfare. Who said that? That was Steve Vernon in an article when he was running that was written by Jessica Salmon, 6 a.m., August 11, 2015, in the East County Observer. <coughs> what it comes down to, no, I'm not going to take any money from the builders, any money from the tax. My primary opponent doesn't see a conflict of interest in rezoning land allowing the builder who told them to rezone the land to build on it, and then he's a real estate broker that sells the house. To me, that's a conflict of interest. Just follow the line, follow the money. My whole campaign is built on our votes must be louder than the campaign contributions. Commissioners should be accountable to us, not the highest bidder. My website, again, is electbodmccann.com. Let's redevelop and reform the county commission. The other thing is, I don't want you to disappoint my mother. <laughs> On my website, you're going to see a picture of me standing in front of St. Michael's Cathedral on 83rd Street, 
in South Chicago. I'm two years old. I'm wearing a suit and derby. My mother wrote on the back of that picture. Future doctor, lawyer, or mayor? Only time will tell. We're going to substitute mayor with commissioner. Let's make my mother right. <laughs> This will be the first one I held. I did run for another political office against Greg Stubbe in 2010. And I will tell you that he had a good platform. And his platform, first of all, he's a congressman now. He has a degree in animal science and agriculture. His whole platform, I was talking about, you know, a pending opiate crisis. I was talking about federal issues during that time. All politics is local. Local affects national. This is a people first campaign. His platform was a three prong stool. He talked about we needed jobs. Okay? He said we needed high paying jobs. We needed to bring small businesses to town because those are the backbone of the counties. The second prong he talked about was an education prong. The third prong he talked about was agriculture. And he said there was a comprehensive plan for East Manatee County, and that comprehensive plan would be for 20 years. Okay? That plan has changed so much, it's just unbelievable. His platform at that time should be a platform right now. We should be protecting East County. We should not be overbuilding East County. We already have a traffic problem, as everybody has identified coming here tonight. It took me 55 minutes to come here from the River Club tonight. Okay? 55 minutes. I, can't, I left my house at 20 after 4 to come here. And I was surprised. My GPS took me down the street, and I found two roundabouts on the way here. Okay? I don't have a chalkboard, or I would write it for you. But, you know, it's simple geometry. It's a circle. You only need to drive straight through it. That straight line through that, you know, through that circle means no more roundabouts. We really need to stop that. We have agriculture coming from, you know, out in the East County now. And when they come to over here to Tropicana, I can't wait to see that orange truck come through those roundabouts. The other thing that I say all the time, and, you know, I try to be funny again, is I'd like to bring the roundabouts together. I want to see who gets stuck in the figure eight. <laughs> Hi, Dr. McCann. Today in my email, I got a public notice from the county that they're going to have on the 27th of February, uh, they're going to be looking at the laws regarding phosphate mining in our county. Uh, what do you know and what can you share about your position about phosphate mining out east in Manatee County? That's a good tiny point. <laughs> And the governor has said that we should put that phosphate in the roads. That way we won't have to put up any street lights because they'll blow in the dark. <laughs> the truth is that I think phosphate mining is something that is very detrimental. You know, the other day we talked to Dick and Dairy about a desalination plant because there's not going to be enough water here. Okay? The desalination plant is a great idea too. Except for one thing. What do you do with the waste? Where does it go? Where do you put it? Okay? I talked with the chief of police and mayor down in Holmes Beach. They have bacteria in the water down there that is no longer being filtered by a natural reservoir. To answer the gentleman's point back there, you know, you have these God-given wetlands. What makes you think a man-made artificial wetland is going to be anywhere near as good? The other thing is, they built, they, or they rebuilt the filtration plant. They had all seven commissioners out there drinking the first drink of water out of that plant. They said it tasted really good. Some of them didn't like it when I said, did it taste as good as the Kool-Aid? <laughs> I've got a quick question. I used to be the, uh, I used to work at an environmental learning center in Oregon. And um, so, and I lived in Berkeley, we went to Berkeley. Uh, we won't hold that against <laughs> your mother welcome too. I learned a lot there. And um, <clears throat> never forget just a little side 
Now, Noam Chomsky, who works at MIT, who is a devout communist, is also a linguist, leader of the Democrat Party, really, uh, in the far, far left. So that's what you're really up against, Noam Chomsky, when it comes to the language, and controlling the language. He's, he's brilliant, as much as he is evil. As far as the left is concerned, when it comes to environmental issues, they've got some good ideas. And um, I'm not trying to be flippant about it, but there are, what would you call those fields that they've created, the wetlands that they've created to reclaim and um, uh, waste water? I can't remember what that's called. But they have those functioning. They're actually natural wastewater treatment plants, if you will, that they've created up in Northern California. I don't see why we can't do something like that down here. I'm all for preserving the wetlands and open space as much as we can. And I, my question is, is this, if you're not going to go out and raise the money from businesses, because there are plenty of businesses in the business community, I work with them every day, that are concerned about the environment, they're concerned about the things that you've spoken about here today, especially veterans homelessness. Um, I, I, I dare say that you have an opportunity to go out there, knock on those doors, press the flesh, and um, you'll be able to raise some money if you put your shoulder to the wheel, if you will. And for those of you who are just, you know, negative about businesses giving money to candidates, well, you better go out and figure out something else on how to raise money because Florida is one of the hardest places to run when it comes to the big money, especially now with the development going on, all the people moving here because they're fleeing up north. They're fleeing. I mean, I'm one of them. Uh, I've got the hell out of there because it's so dangerous to live up there. Um, I was talking to my daughter about this the other day. If somebody had broken into your house and you shot them, you go to jail. Yeah, Massachusetts, you have to beg the local authority on whether or not you can have a gun, even though you have the Second Amendment. Um, pepper spray is outlawed. So. My question to you is, I don't know, I really like your Catholic background being a, you know, a suffering Catholic. Um, what do you think your chances are? Well, I think our chances are great. We're going to win. Two, I will tell you, I'm not a suffering Catholic. I'm a practicing Catholic. My, my parish is Our Lady of the Angels. And I'm also a member of the Knights of Columbus. Okay. I have other credentials, but the campaign isn't about me. This campaign is about you, okay? A vote for me is a vote for you. If you want to go by credentials, we can talk about Republican credentials, because obviously that's going to come up in one of these back ends. I'm a, I'm a member of the Republican National Lawyers Association, okay? That is the poll watchers and the legal arm to make sure that the election integrity is there. I'm a member of the Federalist Society, okay? I have many credentials that you don't see. I'm, an, I'm a life member of the NRA, lifetime member of the NRA. I'm a former police officer. I'm a former paramedic. I've done community service before. And it's all about service. It's not about me. And that's why I'm not here. You know, if you want to see credentials, go to my website. You'll love what you see. In 2010, when I was running, they questioned a lot of my credentials, so I actually put the diplomas and the certificates out. Okay, I've been a doctor for 36 years. I've been a lawyer for 24 years. I'm a member of the Florida Bar. I'm a member of the 11th Circuit. I'm a member of the D.C. Bar. I'm a member of the Middle District of Florida, and I'm a member of the U.S. Supreme Court. As a doctor, I'm board certified in family practice, residency trained, and I have 36 years of medical practice. I have a clean national practitioner database, no malpractice history. My secondary opponent talked about disaster support. I'm a national disaster life support instructor. But again, this campaign isn't about me. I'm not worried about my education. I'm not worried about the things I have. What I'm worried about is how can I serve you and stop what's happening now.
getting back to the wetlands, getting back to those farms over there that are being ignored on the planning commission. It's a quality of life issue. Getting rid of those wetlands causes increased air pollution by forcing us to rely more on cars and drive longer distances for a longer amount of time. How many people believe that? They're consuming more they have. They're destroying farms and they're destroying wildlife habitats. Last night, I had a coyote sleep outside my lanai. Okay. So they're coming out. My wife loves the deer as they run by. It's a wonderful thing, but it's not a wonderful thing when the coyotes chase them. We have bobcats. We have raccoons. When the coyote or the bobcat kills the raccoon, we have turkey vultures come in and actually clean it up, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. But I thought I lived in Bradenton, Florida. I didn't know I lived in Doctari. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> One of the things we're building is a lot of communities out there. And in those communities, we have a lot of amenity. We have health clubs right there. You can stay home. The community is self-serving. It's a perfect community for everybody. It reduces social cohesion by creating isolated and matching communities. And that's what's happening now. It worsens public health. It increases obesity, stress, and traffic accidents. Let's talk about insurance. I've been with State Farm Auto Insurance since I was 16 years old. I hit my 50 year anniversary and they rewarded me by doubling my premium and saying, you live in Florida. There's more people going down there. There's more traffic. You're putting in roundabouts. There's more accidents. There's more serious accidents. There's more deaths. I said, yeah, but I don't have any tickets. I don't have any accidents. Why is my insurance going up? And they said, welcome to Florida. <laughs> The other thing we have is we're lowering the efficiency and effectiveness of public services because the way we're building these things, we have to do U-turns and we have to put emergency vehicles through roundabouts to get into these communities so that they can take care of people. Now when they want to take you back to the hospital, they get to go through the roundabout again. We have a roundabout over by us in Cooper Creek. It's coming out of a shopping center. It's coming out of a road where there's a community and it's coming out of a hotel area, and a health club. Roundabouts, which they never taught me how to drive because we didn't have them when I was learning how to drive. It's supposed to be, you yield to the person on the left, one car goes, then this car goes, then this car goes. You know, what it is, it's a U-turn, a U-turn, a U-turn, a U-turn, and never my turn. <laughs> they, even have, they even have a roundabout, over in Sarasota, where they have traffic lights in. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> the good thing about these roundabouts is they did a study. And in many, many years, they'll be more cost-effective than a stop sign or a traffic light. By that time, we'll have flying cars. <laughs> what we have is urban sprawl. And that urban sprawl that we have is unplanned growth. And every time they see a blade of grass, our joke, they're going to build on it. So I guess they're going to put all the grass cutters out of business. When we get rid of these wetlands, you know, we got challenges providing water. Where are we getting our water from now? Okay, a lot of our water is actually coming from Peace River and we're buying it now. It's going to be more expensive. Taxes are going to go up. You know, we have trouble with electricity, we have trouble with transportation, and we have trouble with health care. All because we can't get there because of the urban sprawl. So what we need is not smart growth. What we need is to stop the growth, get a plan going, let the people in the community here determine what needs to be built. Yes, people do have a right to have a home after they own it, the property rights attach. Until then, the only right they've got is to acquire a home. I have statutes on that from Florida. Plus, U.S. Constitution, the Fourth and Fifth Amendments say that, you know, limited government interference and quiet enjoyment of your home. Okay? And the thing is, there is nothing out there that imputes that to say, okay, since you have those rights, 
you know, we can now give the rights to the builders to build the homes and build more and more and more and more because you may come in our neighborhood right now. Homes can be acquired and building. Waterleaf community is a very nice community. It's in my district. They just built another community next to it. It's four inches higher than Waterleaf. Where do you think the water runoff's gonna go? One of the builders couldn't be here today because he's in court down in Venezuela because he wants to build a shopping mall and they're trying to stop the people from rezoning improperly in order to build that shopping mall. But you know, Venice is going to be a very nice place because again, they got rid of a lot of the lands and they're doing a lot of the same things over there in Sarasota County. Pretty soon it's going to be just like Venice, Italy. One hurricane comes through, there's going to be waters in the street and got bullets going through. So you won't have to travel anymore. It'll be right here. We need to stop all of this sprawl because if we don't do that we're going to lose our community i've been coming down to florida since i was 12 years old my aunt lived in miami north of miami at that time you drove you saw fort lauderdale you drove from fort lauderdale to boca raton you drove from boca raton down to west palm beach everything else was free oceanfront there was no great beach there was no pompano beach there was none of that do we really want another South Beach over here? You got a West Palm Beach on the East Coast. So I don't know what we're going to call ourselves. We can't call ourselves East Palm Beach over here once we put up those high rises. You know, and the biggest joke that you know I made was I called up my doctor and I said, wow, you know, they're building all these high rise apartments and they're building them right off the street. I mean, there there is five feet of sidewalk and that's it. You know, you can drive into these. And I said, they want to put me on one on the top floor. He said, I told him I'm scared of heights. I can't be up there. And he said to me, oh, don't worry about it. You just got an apartment complex. <laughs> yes. I have a question. Since, since this is a loud microphone, um, a lot of our economy depends on building because that's, that's where the money changes hands. And so it's a, it's, it's a big part of what we do. If, if we slow that down, what is your idea to bring additional um, cash stream, so to speak, uh, to this area as far as business goes. What other businesses do you see uh, that would help to take the place of construction? Just he was just about to ask the same question. Really? Yes. That's what he said. He was about to ask I got it first. Uh -huh. What we need to do is we need to bring more small businesses in here. We need to bring uh, more entrepreneurs in here. You know, there's a tech industry out there that wants to move to Florida. Jeff Bezos is moving to Florida. You know, you just had people from Chicago moving to Florida. We have a lot of businesses coming to Florida. We need to attract those businesses here. You know, we have some business parks, business parks already set up. But one of the things that we don't have here right now is we don't have enough health care. We need to bring more health care here. Okay? Right now, if you want to see a doctor, how many weeks is it? Months. By then, you should be well. Months. Or not. Or not. Correct. There are a lot of things that we can do down here besides just building houses. Okay. Right now, we don't have infrastructure. That needs to be rebuilt. Okay. So there is still going to be some building going on. What we need to do is we need, I'm not saying we don't need to stop building altogether. I'm saying we need to stop rezoning things that shouldn't be built up. So my question is, you know, if we stop, if we had a moratorium tomorrow, tomorrow, we just said, we're not issuing any more permits, and counties in Florida have done that and have been very successful, we would continue to thrive as a county from that point forward. Our neighborhood publixes would still be in business, the Walgreens, the restaurants, all in the same area would be fueled by the residents in that community, and that's the way it should be. And then you'd see people in the workforce housing that could actually afford to live in those communities. If we had a more time right now and just said no more, we, our county, we would be okay. And I will tell you, as a general contractor that builds houses, we have 30, 40 different trades. Uh, people come in there, several trades, they can't afford to live there. They're not, they're not happy driving out two hours each way, right? So the people that are building the houses can't afford to live there. 
But I would tell you, you take that same tradesman in a local community, and if he wanted to be a plumber to fix pipes, he would make a very good living right in the community he lives. If he was a roofer, he would make a very good living right in the community. He would, all, the, all these roofs, they have expiration dates, pipes, plumbing, all those trades to be re reappropriated into our community instead of building a cookie cutter house. You can't afford to live there. It's starting at 435000 don't forget tourism. We have beautiful islands out there that would bring in tourism, would bring in money. Okay, and if we have those, if we leave those alone, if we leave the wetlands there, if we leave the mangroves there, and we leave the local rural there, that will bring in a lot of money to the area also. Because tourism is big down here. You know, again, another joke. Up north, the leaves are changing. Down here, the license plates are changing. Okay, so the thing is that People will stop coming here if you just build a concrete jungle with urban sprawl. That's a good thing. Maybe we should build more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Suffering. You got, you got a question? No, I just have a mic. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting down to the part of the program where, first of all, I want to thank you for coming, Bob. This has been... You been all right? Yeah. I want to thank you for letting me come here because, again, you're patriots for what's going to make the difference here. It's your vote that counts. It's on August 20th, the primary. If you want to vote early, I can spell it for you. Bob, B O B, and it's the same backwards. <laughs> I'm sure he would absolutely appreciate you him. signing his petition. And don't forget the date. Yes. Remember that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you again. All righty. <coughs> I don't need to.